My recent videos have strongly resonated with a lot of people, articulating for them things they sometimes weren't even consciously aware of, things that they had been feeling and experiencing for a long time, a decade or more in some cases. A lot of people have therefore had real catharsis from my efforts to analyse and to describe, which I'm pleased about and want to keep doing. I get the same satisfaction out of making these videos as you do from watching them. Along those lines, sometimes I get a comment that goes the other way and has the same kind of effect on me that my videos have been having on them. So here we go. I got another really good comment on a recent video and it really got me thinking about something. It was a description that made me start to really consciously deliberate on something that's been a big problem for me. It reads, The battles no longer look like battles, but rather like some kind of brawls. Blob fights, unit versus unit rather than army versus army. It's all directed towards competitive multiplayer, with all the unit abilities and micromanagement. It became a click fest like Starcraft. There's no more battle lines, no more real battle tactics. It's only unit versus unit all over the map. Each battle turns into a mess with little blobs of units all over the place. It's just repulsive. It's no longer that strategy game that I fell in love with a long time ago when Shogun 1 came out. I've already described how the button mashing of unit abilities is not a good fit for Total War and I won't go over that again, at least not today, but the real point of this comment that impacted me is the clear description of the loss of army cohesion. I knew exactly what I meant immediately. I've played two modern Total War games, Three Kingdoms and Troy, and in both cases my battles have immediately and reliably devolved into discoordinated spread out clusterfucks with friendlies and enemies all mixed in. My first Total War gameplay in five years really showed it well, where I had infantry chasing my single entities while all of the enemy archers had peeled off and were sitting ducks. Not only is my army structure completely disintegrated, but the enemy army has too. You can see from how I just dumped my useless infantry on a hill away from the fight. There's no longer one fight, but lots of small fights happening independently. There's a complete loss of cohesion, and the reason for this is that cohesion no longer matters in these games. Why is this the case? First of all, I'd be completely remiss to not call back to what I've said in both of my previous two videos. It's because of hidden combat modifiers and how that affects the rock, paper, scissors unit balancing. And it's also because of single entity units and their relegating effect on regular units on the field. Oh my god, 5% with one swing, holy fuck. He's a beast, man. It's <laughs> fucking stupid shit, holy fuck. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Your warriors are attacking the gates. If you have minotaurs, they are even better. It's, it's but the question is, how much damage did we do to our archers before? The enemy gate. <laughs> 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 and we're in. We're that in. Anima boys. That animation, though. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? To encapsulate it in one sentence, it's because the frontline infantryman no longer has a place on the battlefield holding the front line. For this video, I'm going to focus on what the consequences are and what it feels like, whereas the previous two videos identified causes. When you're playing an RTS or an RTT or a strategy game, you really need to have a feeling for how simple engagements will go and have initial metrics to work from. If you asked me to tell you how a Katana Samurai versus a Yari Samurai will go in Shogun 2, I'd be able to immediately estimate within about 5-10 to 10 casualties to the winner and how long the fight will take to resolve to the nearest 10 seconds with very high certainty and accuracy. That kill-death ratio of Katana Samurai versus Yari Samurai is a fundamental constant of Shogun 2. Even more importantly, I have a strong subconscious intuition for it and that's a big part of how I can play that game while aiming so high 
in order to have meaningful achievement and real satisfaction. It's like how in Age of Empires 2, I'd be able to tell you how many hit points a knight will have left after fighting two men at arms at the same time. There's a consistency and a determinism within the game and how it plays out, and an awareness of that consistency is essential for using that unit successfully in similar situations in the future, and that awareness serves as a baseline for continuing to pick up and learn the rest of the game intimately. I've played Red Alert 2 so much since I was a kid that I can just look at two groups of five or six units about to engage and know from their composition and positioning exactly what will be left standing in 20 seconds. Good chess players are good because they've learned the opening really well and have memorised all of the variations and their typical playout and then they have a good ability to improvise during the middle game and end game on top of that. There's consistency in all of this. Consistency is the beginning of success with anything, and gaining an awareness of it is how the success happens. I'm reminded of a YouTuber from my Dishonored days that was critiquing Dishonored 2 and made comments about the importance of consistency and how the player relies so heavily on it, especially if they're aiming for high level play. Now the other thing about Blink, and this is especially true with Far Reach, is that the indicator is janky as all fucking hell and jumps all over the place. Far Reach is so bad for this and you can never quite be sure what it's going to do. There's even times where it changes and then doesn't change back. Like for instance, it may be targeting the ground and then you jump, don't move the mouse at all, and when you land back on the ground it's now targeting the wall or something else. Like you'd think there'd be some sort of a system where it locks on relative to your crosshair, but nope, it just does whatever it wants and this messes up my runs all the time because there's just no consistency with and like imagine if other games were like this imagine if it were street fighter and your high frame lengths and your combos you're like abc's whatever would randomly turn into one frame lengths during the combo and you could never predict it like all that practicing timings and the feel and the muscle memory would just go out the window you'd fuck up all the time and that's what using blink is like in this game things like this in life that are so micro based and specific like doing high skill video game shit is an example of this requires consistency and if you don't have consistency you cannot do those things consistently what do you know and this game just is not consistent. And it's not just high level play. High level play is just normal play with greater precision, driven by more ambition. The satisfaction of all gameplay involves attaining competency and using it to overcome in-game challenge. There's a reason all the other YouTubers and streamers covering Three Kingdoms stick to the balanced approach of bringing a retinue of impotent, worthless spears and letting the enemy pile onto the front of it. And it's not because it's effective. It's not even an effective cavalry countermeasure, a wall of spears. It's because it's consistent and that's it. It's easy to set up and manage and it produces reliable results. That being your front line ravaged in the melee while the rest of the army actually wins the fight. Tradesmen buy one set of high quality and consistent tools and get used to relying on them. Familiarity with the tool is often even more important than the build quality and inherent utility of the tool. Total War players bring infantry to hold the line and to structure their fights and to get used to the situations and tactics that result from it so they always know what the battlefield will look like 30 seconds from now and will always be able to retain control. And one of the most important ways to do that in Three Kingdoms is to bring infantry even though they're terrible. They may be terrible, but at least they're consistent about it. When I first started playing Three Kingdoms, and then again with Troy, the first thing I did was to try using my infantry conventionally in basic matchups with enemy infantry, to see how they perform and how much I can get out of them in terms of putting them on hills and favourable fights that should be great for them. The first thing everyone should do in any Total War, or any real time strategy game, is to give their basic unit lots of different fights and see how they perform. In Shogun 2, it's Yari Ashigaru. In Rome Total War, it's Hastati or Hoplites or Spear Warband. In Medieval 2, it's Spear Militia. Even gunpowder games like Follow the Samurai follow this with their basic levy infantry or line infantry. You learn that unit and then you go from there with learning other units. 
and then eventually you've mapped out performances battlefield wide, both of your units and enemy units, and you slowly develop a feeling for how reliable your units are and what your armies are able to achieve. Slowly, you come into possession of the ability to make plans, to learn the timing and manoeuvring windows you're going to be working with, to start to be able to think ahead and anticipate and make plans that are successful, and then the real satisfaction from the gameplay begins. If you asked me about baseline units for games like Three Kingdoms and Troy, I wouldn't be able to tell you what they are, and even if you gave me the name of the unit, I wouldn't know what its performance would be against many other units. All I'd know is that it's bad. Light Swords and Three Kingdoms will perform badly in almost every situation. Badly enough that it doesn't make much sense to even consider them to have any actual resilience or real offensive capability. Their significance ends at their unit type being infantry, their class being light, and their ability to deploy smoke and caltrops and sponge arrows. There isn't any need to look at their melee attack or melee defense. That's just minutia while they're always going to have a bad fight. Familiarity and intimacy with the unit serves almost no purpose. Your decisions won't change. Light swords are the same again in Troy. They'll just get slaughtered unacceptably in fair fights against similar units. They lose to themselves at a rate of 3 to 1 on legendary difficulty. That's just grotesque. If you ask me right now what will happen on legendary difficulty when a unit of your heavy Trojan spears gets into a straight fair fight against an enemy unit of medium swords, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I have no idea. I don't think anyone on the planet does. If I had to guess, I'd say it's going to be an atrociously bad trade that you'll just never want to permit to occur for any length of time and never want to learn the feeling of. It's a losing situation and that's all that's worth knowing about it. Every second of exposure that your unit of heavy Trojan spears spends standing its ground against those medium swords, even if it's fresh and fighting downhill, it's being eroded repulsively by hidden combat modifiers and you mismanage that unit by letting this happen to it. It's easy to see how these hidden combat modifiers attack the structure of the battlefield and completely disincentivize any real and meaningful engagement and are a deterrent to any real player investment or familiarity. The player is robbed of the experience of facing the greatest and most satisfying challenge the game has to offer on Legendary of standing their ground on fair terms with high quality infantry which they can then develop intelligent and satisfying tactics around to control the battlefield and overcome the enemy with confidence and strength, with enthusiasm and creativity. Single entities make it even worse. Why use infantry to hold the line when you can just send your general right into the middle of the clusterfuck and have units blob onto them like candy floss around a stick. These games are designed now so that you'll have way more than enough time to capitalise on the opportunity he makes. Achilles can spend 10 minutes stuck in a blob of multiple enemy units, like what that guy's comment described at the start. That's one man tying up a whole chunk of the enemy army and rendering them essentially stunlocked and ripe for cycle charging or concentrated ranged fire. So on the one hand, infantry pay out the nose to stand toe to toe, and on the other hand, single entities bestow the ability to take enemy units completely out the fight for whole minutes, or instead outright delete them with some support getting involved. It's difficult to see how the battlefield cannot just devolve into a ranged clusterfuck, as is the case with Warhammer or a cavalry merry-go-round, as is the case with Three Kingdoms, or a 2D timing puzzle, as is the case with Troy. All of these playstyles are different, granted, but they're all robbed of authentic fair fights, and they're devoid of any meaningful real-time tactics challenge, which involves combined arms tactics and coordinated decisive battlefield-wide manoeuvres, 
I'm able to micromanage all of these units about as well as anyone, but it's just not satisfying to do it. The gameplay becomes extremely tactically flat, and it feels like I'm being forced into playing the game in an extremely restricted way. As a general rule, the more atrociously infantry perform in any given Total War game, the less satisfying that Total War game is to play. The most frustrating and unsatisfying gameplay I ever had on Medieval 2, which is a game that's often held up alongside Shogun 2 as the peak of Total War experience, was trying to play as Scotland of all factions. In Medieval 2, Scotland's specialisation is solid infantry with focus on pikes, and pikes in that game are simply ineffective. It's one of the biggest letdowns in my long Total War history to come to that awareness. I went from playing as the Greeks and Macedonians in Rome Total War and utilising their spears and sarissas for devastating phalanx warfare, becoming excited at seeing Scotland in Medieval 2 be the clear successor of those amazing mechanics. We'll make spears. Hundreds of them. Long spears, twice as long as a man. Not long. Right. Some men are longer than others. Only to notice that pikes in Medieval 2 are just objectively bad, and Scotland is just clearly a weak and useless faction as a consequence. Probably the worst faction in the whole game because of it. They don't even stand well against head-on cavalry charges. They're bad at repelling cavalry, they're terrible in a protracted melee, and they lack shields to protect them from archers, especially the English longbows on their doorstep. What this means is that Scottish Medieval 2 gameplay feels aimless and is just disorientating and frustrating. They're totally out of place, and it's fruitless to try to harness them. No real successful and satisfying gameplay exists. The battlefield is a mess playing as Scotland in Medieval 2. I can no longer think of my base infantry unit as being expected to score 200 kills in a fair fight and be trying to match and exceed that with supporting cavalry and archers. I can no longer think, alright, well, pikes usually score a 2kd in a fair melee against their rival units. Let's see if I can give them really favourable fights and raise that even higher with cavalry and ranged support. The only thought about them is that they're terrible and are to be kept out of combat and play as little part in the battle and game as possible. Avoidant gameplay. Better just spam border horse and hire every mercenary crossbow unit in the game instead. Suddenly you're using cavalry that's as English as it is Scottish and supporting them with crossbows that might as well be carved from you as a pike faction. So in a game where infantry can slug out gritty fights on good terrain, where cavalry can devastate the battlefield with brutal charges, and where archers and crossbows can rain death upon everything, pikes alone stand as useless, and Scotland alone stands as an impotent, neutered faction. The dream is dead. I remember being excited at the thought of trying to deploy Yuan Shao's heavy infantry in Three Kingdoms in order to finally have some satisfying gritty infantry line battles before realising it would be the exact same experience as playing as Scotland in Medieval 2. In the case of Medieval 2, it's down to pike implementation and buggy mechanics. In Three Kingdoms, it's hidden combat modifiers and terrible balancing. This is why I need bows with ammo for these fucking units that I can't, I, I can't deal with these units really effectively any other way. I need arrows for this shit. The situation with hidden combat modifiers and its effects on balance is so bad, so extreme, that the proportion of infantry I have in my army compositions in Three Kingdoms is directly proportional to how likely I am to lose and to how little I am going to be able to do to overcome any underdog odds. 
it's almost impossible to utilise infantry in that game. They'll be terrible on the charge against other infantry. They'll be sitting ducks in the face of ranged units, as you'd expect. And they'll be obliterated by cavalry on the charge, and then perform poorly against them in any protracted melee. Even spears, with their bonus against cavalry and charge reflect, will perform poorly against enemy cavalry. The only good moment in the entire battle for a unit of medium spears is the two seconds during the entire fight where it manages to successfully catch a charge, a dumb head-on charge from the AI, with its charge reflect, which can only happen while two rare conditions are simultaneously met. Brace. Oh my god, were you not braced? They fucking didn't brace, man. Useless bastards. Alright, well... Your spears are static and braced in the direction of the enemy, and the enemy is charging directly into the front of them on horseback. The entire rest of the battle, it's useless. Either fodder in the melee while your cavalry actually fights the battle, or a net to catch enemy units and big blobs for optimal trebuchet targets. Even when medium spears are in the middle of their finest hour, they're passive, impotent, and pathetic. Why would you want to force that experience on a player under any circumstance? And this is how you check for the resilience of cavalry in a total war game. You charge them directly into spears which charge straight back. In Three Kingdoms, the spears melt. They get eviscerated, annihilated. In this game though, well you'll see it. Strongest cavalry unit, great guard. General is in grave danger, weakest Lord. spear unit. The weakest fucking spear unit. Yari Ashigaru. So you've got the strongest cavalry against the weakest spears and they're both charging each other in a straight fight. So this is the most simple, least complex fight slash engagement that can occur between the strongest cavalry and the weakest spears and you're seeing how it's gonna go. And if you were to get the strongest cavalry unit in Three Kingdoms against the weakest spear unit in Three Kingdoms, they would not even kill a single horse. It could not be a bigger gap. The gulf is tremendous. And it's not just spears, and it's not just Three Kingdoms. Here's footage of two units of light swordsmen on Legendary and Troy, where my unit takes 4 minutes to score 29 kills, that's a kill every 8 seconds. In other words, that's 15 minutes to wipe out the other unit. And here's a battle I fought in my Cao Cao campaign with Zhu Huang and his assault infantry. This was one of the most ridiculous slogs I've ever endured in Total War, where I watched my infantry nearly get wiped out even though I gave them plenty of advantages and support against a weaker opponent, I fought well and it was still a horrible fight. The game falls flat. Contrast that with playing the Third Age mod for Medieval 2 and playing as Gondor and holding back thousands of orcs at East Osgiliath with a few units of Gondor infantry with upgraded armour with supporting Gondor archers firing down from the walls above with fire arrows to tip the balance in their favour, ready to join the melee with their own thick Gondor plate and hefty sword. You feel every bit of that tiny edge from the blacksmith upgrade, and you are so grateful for those perfectly timed volleys of fire arrows that rout those tired orcs just in time for your Gondor infantry to cycle and catch their breath and take a better position for the next wave. This is all happening in a fantasy game, by the way, and it's some of the most satisfying Total War gameplay I've ever had. Nothing like that can really happen in any Total War game nowadays. The problem with a game balanced so badly away from stalwart infantry like this is that if I want to be effective, I'm basically just bringing pure micromanagement armies and playing a 2D timing puzzle of dismantlement, pulling the enemy apart and effortlessly defeating them in detail. 
the only truly viable alternative to that is to introduce ranged unit composition and try to utilise combined arms interplay between the cavalry and the ranged, taking some of the onus off of the cavalry. And I'm going to fire a full volley. Full volley with every unit. And then charge. And that should do it. 74 versus 200. 73, 72. 72. Oh, that worked. This has always just caused frustration for me because I'm always wishing I had actual reliable infantry that can stand toe to toe and allow proper rock, paper, scissors for truly combined arms tactics to unfold properly. The consistency that every player seeks and tries to reenact out of decades of muscle memory just does not exist in these games. It's a habit that needs to be broken by the player in order for them to become fully effective because these games are no longer total war. They're partial war. They're incomplete war. They're avoidant gameplay running away simulators. You'll never again see a solitary unit of Spartan hoplites holding the line for 15 minutes while their comrades fall away around them. You'll never again see ranks of Astati and Triarii counter-marching to hold back undisciplined and rapidly tiring barbarian hordes. You'll never again see elite katanas going from target to target, only losing a few men on each engagement, emerging victorious after a long series of heroic charges. That era is over. If you've had the same experience with these games, let me know. I'm really curious what y'all think. And as always, I will be reading the comments. These videos are made with support from generous patrons. If you'd like to chip in, check out my page. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Roadie 451 Halcyon, William Ballangari, and Robert Sparks.